It has been more than a year since we got accredited as a Google Analytics Authorized Consultant. And I would like to share some of our experience dealing with the hippo. Right? Uh, not the animal, but the highest paid person's opinion. Right? Basically the bosses, someone who has uh, not taken public transport for a while, has not had at a local hawker store for a while, and gets paid quite a bit of money. Work-wise, these hippos are strong-minded. They are decision approvals, or they like to make decisions. They are not really into the operational matters, and they might not understand who or what your end clients are or what they want. So why do we need to tame the hippos then? You know, they are the bosses and so why? It's because there are a lot of sexy marketing things being developed, right? It's easy for the hippos to latch on to what is the next sexy thing, right? And then they declare to the world at large that, hey, let's do social media, let's do viral, let's do video SEO, you know? So, so, and it's more often than not, they want instant gratification. So the poor marketeer, you guys, have to scramble to execute the campaign, right? And the campaign results may not be ideal because it's um, more of a vanity project than one tied to measurable objectives. And how do you tame the hippo in this instance? Using web analytics, Google ana analytics. In a normal company situation, you have bosses with their business intelligence giving instructions to their rank and file, their employees, and the employees ask, execute, right? That's the normal situation. What if, what if we had data analytics or uh, analytics uh, insights? The rank and file are able to use these insights, share it with their bosses, Bosses get impressed, and a culture of information exchange results. So what you have is an organization that is geared, aligned towards a common goal. Business intelligence is shared. So I'm here to share three case studies illustrating how ClickTrue, as an external consultant or vendor, has managed to convince, educate these hippos into the right way, optimal way of using Google Analytics. So there's Her World, a very prominent Singapore female magazine. There's Nestle and uh, Tyco, where we use trends. And of course, ourselves, right? Uh, we have hippos and click through, so we use a structured optimization process for the hippos here. We'll start off with Her World. For her world, it was actually uh, the, uh, our engagement with them was with two parties. One was with the magazine. The other one was with an uh, international cosmetics brand. Um, both trying out online marketing jointly. So they had a joint campaign. So the campaign here was to convince the magazine's readers, the public at large, that if they use their cosmetics products, they will be as attractive as this woman here. So they had a lot of ideas. They wanted to get um, sign-ups for, for the free samples. They wanted to get uh, testimonials from these people who got free samples. And they want this, this group of people to join a reality-style competition, right? Like uh, Survivor, et cetera, et cetera, but with beauty products. So the challenge here for us as the, their vendor was to get normally reticent Singapore people, women, to sign up online, you know, come, come up forth to use these products. And how was the marketing plan executed? Right? We had lots of components. We had microsites. Um, we had like Facebook, Google, electronic direct mailers or emails, print even. So it was all a, a, a huge project. And the whole strategy was executed with kind of a military position. Hippos gave the word go, it was launched, right? So at this point in time, normal marketers will be like, hey, good job, man. Well, we launched the campaign without trouble, you know? So let's, let's go for drinks. And after the next day, after the hangover, they realize, oh, damn, you know, are the results going to be good? Or, or you know, it will be like a lackluster campaign. 
So that's when the Google Analytics consultants come in, right? We come in to, to analyze and start optimizing the campaign from the word go. So at, at ClickThrough, we focus very early on the outcomes. The outcomes here were signups, very simple signups. And we produced this chart in the first week of the campaign, right? We shared it with the hippos. Say, like, hey, hippo, you know, the search and social media has the lowest cost per sign up. Online drives significant percentage of your signups. Hippos are impressed. It's like, hey, this has been the only the first week, and you're able to produce this speedy analysis. Good job. We get buy-in. And what do we do next? We don't go for drinks, of course. We now have the flexibility to make decisions early in the campaign. That's because the hippos trust us. So using this chart, this is what we did for the first three weeks using head data. For the first week, we saw the EDMs not really performing well. For the second week, we put in Facebook. We got a bit of a lift in the results. And the follow up last week, we revised the first week's EDM and we launched it, resulting in significantly higher performance. So going back to the first EDM, you will notice which, was, which had to be improved. We went to the hippos, the team, and told them, hey, your first EDM sucks, right? So, and then we had the beta, data to back us up because, hey, this is what the data says, your EDM sucks, okay? So on normal occasions, the designers, the, the, the people doing these EDMs were like, what's with that, man, right? They get sensitive, but our results bore through because uh, the confidence was with us. We made the changes, and the latter EDMs, the second stage EDMs, performed 33% better in conversion. So comparing the, these two uh, versions here. Which comes to the first tip. Deliver reports and analysis that drive actions. That's what we mean here. Tie findings to outcomes early, provide recommendations, and you can get buy-in from hippos from the bosses. And thus, hippos are now transformed into the cute team animal you see here. Second case studies, Nestle Tyco. Uh, Nestle is, of course, the, into food and beverage. Um, Milo and, and what have you. Tyco is a very big conglomerate. So they are, we deal with one of the brands, ADT, working on fire and security systems. So this group of um, clients, they're very savvy into online marketing. And they are so savvy that they are data obsessed, right? They could be mathematicians, finance people, accountants, um, they really like to drill down into the figures, right? They seek solace in figures and numbers, and more often than not, they get distracted from the macro campaign objectives. For example, they like to, to look, on, look at page views, visitors on a daily basis, right? They like to use multiple um, web analytics platforms, Kiasu, you know? So they use Omniture, they use uh, Web Analytics, they use Google Analytics, Web Trends, Core Metrics, and they like to use lots of web Excel sheets. So there are stacks of Excel sheets you know, in their database, you know, telling us, hey, let's drill down into this point now. So we had to cope with all this data overload. So how do we do this? If you look at this graph here, what can be inferred? Right, there's a peak early in the stage, and then it sort of dies off in the funk. So if the hippo comes along and sees this graph, you say, you know, Adrian, I think we have to really drill down into what's happening at the last stage. But if we show them the results as compared to the previous month's one, the current month's one being blue and the orange one signifying last month's results, and then we have a different picture. Results are good because 
there's significant improvement over the previous month's results. Hippo comes along again, sees the results. Hey, we are good, doing a good business, right? Right, doing well. And then there are annotations, as described by Stephanie, to, to provide extra linkage between external events and the peaks and the troughs you see in this chart. So, a second tip for taming the hippo, compare before and after effects, show signs of, uh, why do you compare before and after effects is to show the success, the, the change that demonstrates the, the hard work you're putting in. Show signs of diminishing returns. What happens if sometimes we tend to focus too much on a certain campaign and there's a diminishing returns? By showing uh, that, that, that graph, hippos could be compelled to move on to other more interesting projects. And finally, if, you, if your hippo likes a lot of uh, web analytics platforms, show them similarities of trends from these different platforms. Right? They should correspond. And my last case study, it will be ourselves, ClickTrue. Um, ClickTrue was formed from Hardware Zone. So it was one of the early dot coms that was uh, very successful. They have uh, hardwarezone.com, one of the better tech websites in this region. And they were bought over by Singapore Press Holdings. Right? So, so these hippos are now bigger hippos with the, the price money. And they have this new company. So they're pushing for their own marketing campaigns to drive click through. So they, have, they had the standard objectives. They wanted to get, to get maximum exposure online. They wanted to achieve a X number of signups per month. And because this Guys running click through, right? They ran Hardware Zone for 10 years. So they have a certain idea of how to run online marketing campaigns. Because they have that wealth experience to, to tap on. So our initial assumption was that we could trust these hippos. They obviously knew what they were doing. So we responded to these hippos' wishes reactively. So what happened? They made changes to the website because they are so tech savvy. They made changes to the website, landing pages on the fly. And they had multiple OKRs, objectives and key results, right? From branding one day to, to sign-ups, to page views, to time spent on site, whole lot. And the result was the team, my team, couldn't keep up. Right? We were overwhelmed with all these different requests from all, from all sorts. And we could not clearly analyze and define the drivers. It comes to the last tip we have here. What we did was we looked into ourselves, you know, took a stock take, and developed a structured optimization process. So we defined each stage of the marketing campaign and everybody, including the hippos, had to follow this process, right? So no jumping of the gun, no relying on previous assumptions that, hey, let's do this for this marketing campaign. And by using Google Analytics, we measured, analyzed, and optimized in that sequence each of the hippos' suggestions and ideas. So structured process. So in measuring, what we did was we tie in all our, our media plans and our media sources using Google Analytics and our customer relationship management system, Salesforce. Okay. And this made our marketing team very aware of the impact of their marketing campaign to the success of the sales team because they could see the opportunities coming in, the leads coming in, and whether it translates into business for click through. So everyone now was aligned on the marketing campaign. The next stage, analyzing. Right? So what we have here is we had different individuals working on different parts of our campaign, be it search engine marketing, uh, search engine optimization, right? print ads, uh, websites, uh, referrals, 
uh, magazine insertions, what have you. So each member of the team was in charge of analyzing their contribution to the marketing campaign. So what we did for, as an example, was this print ad. We had a series of print ads in the newspapers. We analyzed um, through putting in vanity URLs, redirects, we were able to track the visitors coming from our print ads. Right? So the, the person in charge of this was able to say that, hey, this do it. for this day, it worked better for us for the print ads. And for this publication, it was very much more effective. And after all this analysis, we go back to the hippos with the recommendations. So we do not just test or just implement these recommendations, we test. And we set up experiments to determine the best uh, recommendation or variance of recommendation. So we make changes to, to let's say, the ad copy by color, by text, right? We make changes to the landing page and a plug for Google here, we use Google Website Optimizer. So through this sequence of measurement, analysis, and testing or optimizing, our results were clear to see. We had unique visitors grow to our site by 524% over the five months. Our leads improved by 500% in three months. And this was due to everyone working in a very structured process uh, towards achieving success for the marketing campaign. So, a checklist again, or recap. For handling the hippo that is new into the online advertising, deliver reports and analysis that drive actions. For hippos that tend to be more savvy and very into figures, use trends. And of course, for the very savvy wow hippos, the click-through hippos, adopt a structured optimization process. And this concludes my presentation. Uh, a copy can be found on this clicktrue.biz slash masterclass. If you have questions and answers, you can tweet it. And of course, we'll be tracking the response. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian.